Hello, everybody, and welcome to another one of my videos in thermodynamics. I'm Professor Azara, and this is the first time that I'm doing exercises in my class. You will just expect from me a regular lecture, but I've decided to add some exercises so you can have an idea how to solve the exercises in the book as far as homework assignments and things like that that we will have moving on. I really need your honest uh, feedback on this first video. Okay, if you can leave me a comment or, you know, like or dislike or, you know, you can also communicate with me um, through Blackboard. I just need to know if what I'm doing is actually helping you and not the other way around. Um, you know, all this is just meant to boost your knowledge in thermodynamics, which is basically what you need right now. So as far as for chapter two goes, exercises are very simple. You know, we're getting used to all the thermodynamics terms. So um, exercises will be very, very fast if you really understand the theory behind it. Um, for this video, you will have only two exercises. And with that, I also want to let you know that homework number two will be posted next week on Blackboard. So please uh, be ready for that and pay attention to the exercise. So chapter two, as we know, it's just all about heat and work. Those two terms are being introduced in this chapter. Um, and we just need to get familiar with that in the first law because we'll be utilizing those terms from now until the end of the semester. So let's just get started with exercise, with the exercise, the first one. So we're going to be solving the 240 in the single, you know. Um, water is being heated in a closed pan on top of a range while being steered by a paddle wheel. During the process, 30 kilojoules of heat is transferred to the water and five kilojoules of heat is lost to the surrounding air. The paddle wheel work amounts to 500 Newton meters. We need to calculate the final energy of the system if the initial energy is 12.5 kilojoules. And then we get the answer, which is 38 kilojoules. So what is really important about the exercise is that we analyze what we have. Okay, and every time will come with the same equation. So I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this equation, but I'm going to write it down. Energy that comes in minus energy that comes out will be equals to the delta of the energy of the system. Right? Or, you know, the other way to write the equation or to know is that everything that comes in minus everything that comes out, it's equals to delta PE, delta KE, or delta U, all right? You know, potential energy, kinetic energy, and internal energy. So everything that comes in and everything that comes out, that refers to heat and work, okay? All the heat coming in minus all the heat coming out plus all the work coming in minus all the work coming out will be equals to all the delta that I just told you. So, or we can look at it in a way that we will have basically everything that comes in minus everything that comes out. This time, we have the picture. When you have the picture, you have to read the statement so you can know the data that has been given to you. And then you can basically um, conclude which terms are you going to be using for your exercise. Right now, it's very simple. Everything given will be used, but in the future, will not be like that. Thermodynamics is like a puzzle, okay? You have to put all the pieces together. So as we see on the picture, basically we have some Q that is coming in, right? And right here we have, I'm sorry about that. So right here we have some Q that's coming out. And this guy right here is a puddle that is doing work into your system. Therefore, the work it's coming in, right? So if we, if we remember the equation, everything that comes in will be, right, Q in plus the work of the shaft coming in minus everything that comes out. The only thing that is coming out is the Q. And this is equals to delta PE plus delta KE plus delta of internal energy. And if you remember everything that we've discussed in the explanation of the chapter, when the system is stationary as the one that we have right now, Delta PE is zero and delta KE is zero. If you don't remember that, then go back to the video 
and watch the explanation. So if we keep working with this equation, we will have that Q in plus work of the shaft in minus Q out, it's equals to delta of internal energy. So now that you know exactly what you need to use, all you have to do is just plug into the values, you know, plug in the values. So Q in, I believe is 30 kilojoules plus the work of the shaft, which is 500 Newton meters. Okay, those are simple units. You have to convert everything to kilojoules, okay? You cannot work with oranges and apples, okay? I'm not going to tell you how to convert that. 0 0.5 kilojoules, it's equal to 500 Newton meters. And then the Q coming out, it's equal to five kilojoules. And this is equals to delta U, which is U2 minus U1, okay? What is U2 and U1? U2 is the energy, the final energy, and U1 is basically the initial energy that we have, all right? We already have the value for U1, which is equals to 12.5 is giving on the exercise right here. And that's why I'm telling you that you have to read the statement more than once. So if we solve for U2, we will get that U2 it's equals to 38 kilojoules. And that's the result of the exercise. Basically, the final internal energy of the system is equals to 38 kilojoules. And that's it. These guys, this right here could be easily 10 points on one exam, uh, probably the first one, or five points in the last exam. But you will be using the first law all the way to the end of the semester. So now we're going to move to the second exercise, and it's the 243E. This one, basically, it's giving us a lot of information. Let's just read it through. Uh, but a vertical, piston cylinder device contains water and it's been heated on top of a range. During the process, 65 BTU of heat is transferred to the water and heat loses from the side walls amount to um, a BTU. The piston rises as a, as a result of evaporation and 5 BTU of work is done by the vapor. We need to calculate the change of the change in the energy of the water for this process. And then, and again, we have the answer. So most of the exercises will be the same way, all right, same way. So we have basically energy that comes in minus energy that comes out, it's equals to delta of the energy of the system. Let's just read it again, but now I'm gonna start making some drawings. So this is, I could say, state number one. And then they said that after the heat is transferred due to evaporation, the piston is raising. So now this is a position two, and this is a position one. And then heat is coming into my system, and some heat is lost to the surroundings. Okay, if I do that equation, like I said, everything that comes in minus everything that comes out, basically I will have the Q that's coming in minus the work that has been done, um, you know, due to the evaporation, it'll be work that come out, minus the Q that is lost to the surroundings, will be equals to delta U plus delta PE plus delta KE. And like I said, these ones will be zero because it's a stationary system. And now I have the Q in, minus work out, minus Q out, that's equals to delta U. And this is what they're asking us to do. All I have to do when you have a clear picture of the formula that you need and the data that you have, all you have to do is plug in the values and that's it and get the result. So, so basically they're telling you that 65 BTU minus five BTU minus 8 BTU will be equals to delta U. Pretty simple. If we calculate delta U, 
which is equals to u2 again minus u1 would be equals to 52 BTU. And that is the answer. Okay, so that's the energy content of the system, or basically the energy content of the system increases by 52 BTU during this process. So, like I said at the beginning of the, of the video, this is a very short video with only two exercises, very simple ones because we're still in chapter number two. We haven't played with water tables and things like that. So that's coming, but I really need you to understand the first law as I, expl as I explain it in my video of the chapter number two. So if you haven't watched that, that particular video, I will recommend you to go and watch that video first before coming into these exercises. Well, guys, like I said, email me if you have any questions, but more importantly, I want to hear the feedback from you. You can like or dislike this video so I can have an idea if this is helping the class or is doing otherwise, okay? So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.